going on guys in today's video i'm going to try and give you guys a rundown on why i for jamaica i don't think nuclear is the answer and what is my solution um if we're going to invest that kind of investment in i just got that money swag yeah. Yeah, we're going to make some science with some business um science behind nuclear Nuclear fission happens, generates energy. Use that energy to turn a turbine. That turbine generates electricity. Water goes through a turbine, turns a turbine, generates hydropower. Similar process, turn turbine, generate power. But instead of water and gravity, you're using like water and a, a complex nuclear situation that is done by some very, very smart people. So spinning a turbine generating electricity, that's not the part to really get too worried about in a sense, but it's the pros and cons and the downsides and the upsides of generating electricity that way. Um, let's start with the pros. Energy dense, doesn't take up that much space compared to a solar farm or a wind farm. Nuclear takes up a little bit of square feet that makes sense. Um, consistent base load power. Um, one of the reasons why we still use nuclear and we still use like coal and dirty forms of energy is because they're there when we need it versus solar is dependent on the sun or wind is dependent on the wind. Whenever we need power, we can just burn gas or we can burn coal and we'll have power. So it's very consistent and reliable and dependable in that sense. Um, another pro is that it doesn't generate a lot of fossil fuels. I don't think it generates any, any once it gets finished. Um, once it gets up and running, it doesn't generate any fossil fuels. Um, so let's get into the cons. One of the biggest cons that people really don't talk about, limited supply of uranium. Um, there's uranium in the oceans, but how we get uranium now, there's only like, a not even a hundred years worth of today's demand. There's more and more places use nuclear that amount of available uranium is going to diminish and we're going to have to go into the oceans to get it. And I don't know the economic harm or the, you know, environmental harm that might do. So there's something to think about. Um, another downside, it's the most expensive form of energy. And this video is going to get into like reasons for Jamaica not to do it. Um, to take energy and say we're going to make a more expensive form of energy the primary source of energy on the island i don't understand that um because the memorial memorandum of understanding with the canadian company that the uh, uh, minister holmes wholeness i think he's the one who presented it um talked about um from what i could see the information i can get from them and on the website, it's kind of murky right now, but it looks like we'll probably get like a one gigawatt facility and it's going to cost like $10 billion. $10 billion is another downside of nuclear is expensive um, to build to get started. Um, so it's just, it's just really expensive, $10 billion. Another downside is the nuclear waste situation. Um, one of the things I think either there's not a lot of scientists in the space or maybe, you know, people don't completely understand it, who are scientists. Um, nuclear waste lasts for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, in some cases, um, Jamaica doesn't really have the environment to store it long-term. Long-term storage is a complicated thing. It's not just like beating up on Jamaica. I don't think any of the nuclear waste in the whole world is properly stored long-term. So that's something to consider. Um, one of the things that I think it's misrepresented is that you can recycle nuclear fuel or like one of the things you might hear is 96% of a nuclear fuel rod, it doesn't get used. That's not true. 96% of a nuclear fuel rod is not nuclear fuel. Only 4% of that nuclear fuel rod can sustain a nuclear reaction. And then after the fuel rod is spent, only 25% of that so 25% of 4% is 1%. So 1% of the total fuel rod can be recycled. Um, 
there's reasons, nuclear proliferation, stuff like that, why we don't refine it higher than 4%, but only 25% of it comes through on the other end as usable fuel. The, after it goes through the, its process, it can't. It just can't do the, the reaction anymore. You can kind of think of it like after a fire, you have the coals. You might have some coals. Let's say you have a barbecue. You might have some coals that you could light again, but some of the coals have gone like completely white and are spent. You can't light them again. Like they're not in the same form they were before. After a barbecue, some of the coals might be still good, but a lot of them are going to be like not in the, the same form that they could be used anymore. So you kind of think of it like that. So I think Jamaica has an issue where you have tropical storms and you have earthquakes. So oh, that's kind of bad for a nuclear situation because to me, Jamaica, if I put my Jamaica hat on, I don't think it's worth risking the tourism industry for expensive power because Three Mile Island, people still think of that. And let me ask you this, would you take a vacation to Fukushima? I know it's not an apples to apples because Fukushima was never a travel destination beforehand, but a lot of people, like half the people in America are don't want nuclear at all. So if anything happens, you'd be risking a lot of people's jobs. And let's go into jobs. Um, nuclear, Looks like it's going to create like 5,000 jobs. I think the solution that I want to put forth um, would create like 20,000 jobs. It, and the part two would create more, but it doesn't create that many jobs. And a lot of those jobs are going to be like from the people from Canada. There's not a lot of nuclear talent in Jamaica, even though there is a nuclear reactor in Jamaica. So a lot of those people will be imported, not as many jobs. And the biggest thing for me not the biggest one of this is going to be the last con we're going to put on nuclear um for jamaica you only have like 12 like 1.2 gigawatts of power in the grid so the nuclear plant is going to pretty much it's going to be like 20 percent renewables right now you build a nuclear plant it's going to be like a one gigawatt facility um and that one gigawatt is going to pretty much be a single point of failure for the island and if it, something has a nuclear reactor, you kind of don't have power at all. And this is why my solution, I think, is for Jamaica to take that $10 billion and invest it into doing renewables and then using the difference to invest in something. Um, so I think renewables, they have their issues. They're in a minute. They are weather dependent, but I think they're cheaper. And I think you can outfit the whole island for about $3 billion, which is bad about that is um, no sun, no solar, no wind, no wind. But my solution is to spend another billion and do battery backup. Um, a nuclear facility is gonna take 10, eight to 12 years on average. And in Jamaica, let's be honest, probably gonna take like closer to 15 because the nuclear know-how just isn't on the island to, outfit the whole island with solar probably take five to seven so let's just add extra three plus like 10 years to outfit the whole island with solar and wind and batteries save a lot of time doing it the wind and solar way um i think it's just you save money um you create more jobs um you probably create like twenty thousand jobs doing that um rolling out the solar and wind um you don't have the single point of failure. For example, hurricane comes through, messes up everything in St. Anne. You can go to like Trelawney and get extra solar panels and put the solar panels back on. But let's say you had the nuclear facility in St. Anne and then St. Anne got messed up real bad. I don't really know how that would affect the island power wise. I don't even talk about like nuclear meltdown or anything, but like if some, you create a single point of failure and if the notion is that we're going to have more severe storms more often, I think spreading out the power generation as much as possible, to me, that makes more sense in terms of a national security, um, people security, keeping hospitals up and running. Let's not have, let's diversify where we generate power as well as diversify the energy mix and not have a single point of failure for like 80% of our power. Um, so I think getting the people to learn how to up 
load solar up keep solar upkeep wind and that kind of things are probably looking at generating like 20,000 jobs so you get probably like four times the jobs it's going to cost let's say i'm wrong and it doesn't cost four billion it costs five billion five billion dollars you get for half the price you get four times the jobs same amount of power it's green it's sustainable it gets done faster um and then because it gets done faster, you could wait five years to roll everything out. And now you can start buying 2030 solar panels instead of 2025 and benefit from better technology and buy it a certain amount every year. So that way you can benefit from the compounding gains that solar and wind are gonna get along the way. I think it allows you to benefit from increasing technology more efficiently. So I just think wind and solar would be a better option. It's cheaper, $5 billion. It's there's just a lot more capital going into wind and solar. It's just it's just where the world is going. Um, we're creating jobs, more jobs, and we we save a lot of money. So let's say I'm wrong and it's not four billion. Now let's say it's six billion. We have four billion dollars. Let's look at the option that I think we Jamaica should do: put wind, solar, or a green environment. Now you spend. Five hundred thousand dollars to maybe build one of the smaller chip fabs, or you can. You don't have the whole money it would take to build like a ten billion dollar chip fab, but you can very heavily subsidize one and get one of the high end chip fabs to come to Jamaica. So, for example, you could spend I'm wrong six billion dollars building out um, the wind and solar on the island. Take half a million, put a low end go to intel say we'll build the whole facility you just come here Five hundred thousand build 500 million build one near kingston 500 million build one in another place the island thing is strategic that's another few thousand jobs a few thousand dollars worth of jobs there um i have a video in the link below about the oil in jamaica i think if you have oil do you run the risk of concentrating a lot of power into the oil sector so i think all extra money needs to be spent on other technologies, especially since oil seems to be a, a type of energy that's going away. Um, we're going to begin to the party late. It's going to take years to build it out. Let's make Jamaica future proof while benefiting from current advancements. Um, so got tourism. Don't want to mess that up with any nuclear stuff. Not to say anything bad would happen, but just if something bad were to happen in Jamaica, I think it would be catastrophic for the economy. So I think it's protects your tourism industry. Um, it helps you not be so dependent on oil, especially like if you can roll it out faster, less risk of people getting hooked on to cheap oil um, than nuclear. Um, and then third, it allows you to get foreign exchange. Chips are all the rage right now. Um, chips are where the world's going. Jamaica is strategically near the United States, strategically near the Panama Canal. So it, it could be a real heavy, it could be like the Taiwan of the Western Hemisphere. And it would just take some of the money you would have put into the nuclear reactor. You could really set up the young people in Jamaica pretty well. So. That's just what I wanted to give my two cents on the issue. Sometimes I see issues pop up in Jamaica and this one's science-based slash money-based. I don't want the science because the science really isn't what's driving the no here. I mean, I, the nuclear waste is bad, but um, it's really the economics of it just don't make sense. Nuclear power is a power that came on the scene um, and like, Really, in the 70s, when there was like an issue where we thought we were going to get any oil, Jamaica is likely going to make an oil announcement in 2025. So that doesn't apply to us. Jamaica's heavy reliant on tourism and doesn't have a lot of heavy industry. So I don't even understand the need to build a nuclear reactor in Jamaica. Um, and I think it, the wind and solar is to me is more on brand for Jamaica. Um, I think you can make a lot of more people um, skilled and be able to take care of their families with it. I think you can use the money that you save to generate foreign exchange. You can push Jamaica as maybe a country that's behind technology wise to a country that is strategically important globally. 
oil and chips. That A, I think you could do a lot better with that 10 billion. And I think Jamaica is a country that has to look at return on investment because there are going to be people who say Amazon just bought into a nuclear reactor. We should do that. Amazon is trying to keep like the PR machine off their back. They are trying to, they have such a high margin business that they can buy expensive energy. The average Jamaican is in a high margin Amazon business. We need to give them the cheapest energy that we can give them. And we need to give them energy that might not cost them their jobs in the future. New people, people just are never going to want to go to Fukushima or Three Mile Island or Chernobyl, probably like ever, just because of what happened. Nuclear things make the headlines. It, it's right or wrong. It's just what's going to happen. So let's spend less money, create more jobs, advance the island, make it better for future generations, and make it so we don't suffer the oil curse. Um, I think nuclear is not the answer. I understand the appeal of it, but once you peel back the numbers, um, I don't think if you told, told a lot of people we could build a chip manufacturing facility and make the whole island in renewables for cheaper than building a nuclear reactor, that people would be pro-nuclear. If you get what I'm saying, like if people knew everything, they wouldn't. I don't think they would choose nuclear on a level playing field. But let me know if you would. Let me know your pros and cons. So this is Nick signing out. I just wanted to do a video to give my two cents and hopefully you feel a little bit more informed about what's going on in the nuclear race. Um, if you want to see any of these slides, um, just let me know. I just got that money swag.